Hey guys, Mr. Bowman here. Our learning objective is in pink. We're learning to use the second derivative to determine the nature of stationary points. So if you watched the previous video, we figured out the nature of stationary points without the second derivative. I'm gonna show us another method. How, do, how can we use the second derivative to determine the nature of stationary points? Um, before we go on to that, let's quickly recap what we learned. So we know the gradient at a stationary point is equal to zero. We learnt about minimums. We learnt about maximums. And we learnt about points of inflection. So we learnt about all of those. And what I want to do is I want to show us how the second derivative can help us with that. So quick, let's quickly change pen color so we know what we're aiming for. So go on to y. So at the maximum, y dash dash. Oh, sorry, at the minimum, y dash dash, that's going to be a negative value. And I'll explain what these mean in a bit more detail. If you're looking for a maximum, y dash dash, that's going to be equal to a positive number. And at the point of inflection, the only thing left over, y dash dash, if it's zero, that will give us a point of inflection. So let's go through, let's try to link this with um, the algebra that we're just about to complete. So let's get back to the yellow pen. So we're starting off here. So first step, we do still, we need to continue, we need to differentiate to find the stationary point. So let's differentiate that. So that becomes negative 1 over 5, because negative 1 tenth times 2 is negative 2 tenths, which is negative 1 fifth, times x. We now need to figure out, well, what is the x value at the turning point we're interested in? And we know at that value, the gradient is going to be equal to 0. So we know y dash will be equal to 0. So 0 is equal to negative 1 fifth times x, which means x is going to be equal to 0. So that's our starting point. Let's find the corresponding y value. So let's put that back into the original equation. So negative 1 over 10 times 0 squared plus 10. That there is going to be 10. So that gives us our coordinate. x is 0, y is 10. So let's get into the second derivative part of it. So this here, what we've done, it's the same as the previous stuff. The second derivative, y dash dash, and what that means is we're actually going to differentiate the second or the first derivative. That will then give us the second derivative. So the, diff the derivative of one-fifth of x is just going to become one-fifth. And at zero, so we can't, there's no substitute to put in zero, and that tells us that it is going to be negative one fifth. Sometimes you may have an x in there, in which case you'll need to submit or put in or substitute your x value, but here we don't. And we can see that's a, a negative number. And just like before, we said if y dash dash is negative, that that value would be a minimum. So we've mathematically proven that we've got a minimum. So therefore, 0, 10. That's the stationary point, and we know it's now a minimum. So hopefully this method's a bit different. You may like it a bit more than the other method with the tables. So let's go into the green pen. Let's differentiate this equation here. Um, so y equals 3x cubed minus 4. 3 times 3 gets us to 9, and we're going to reduce the power by 1. That is the gradient function. And again, we know at the stationary point, the gradient is equal to zero. So y dash will be equal to zero. So zero equals nine x cubed. Um, if you move the nine to the other side, that becomes zero divided by nine, which is zero. And you then move the square as a square root, the square root of zero is still zero. So our x value is gonna be equal to zero. We're then gonna figure out, well, what's the corresponding y value? So y is going to be equal to 3 times 0 cubed minus 4. Well, 0 cubed is 0. 0 times 3 is 0. 0 minus 4. 
gets us to minus four. So we have our x value, we have our y value, that's enough to make the coordinate of the turning point. We now want to figure out the nature of this point. So let's do the second derivative. So let's find our y dash equation. Let's differentiate that again. So 9 times 2, that's going to get us to 18, and the power is going to reduce by 1. So it's going to be 18x. And what I want to note is here, in the previous equation, we didn't have an x value, which means that was just the second derivative. But in our case, we do have an x value, which means we need to substitute our x in to find out what y dash dash actually is. So let's get rid of all that. So y dash dash, our x was equal to 0. 18 times 0 is going to be equal to 0. So we know y dash dash, the second derivative at our stationary point for this equation is 0. And if you go down to the bottom, what we said is we said if y dash dash was equal to 0, that is a point of inflection. And that makes sense given, if you look at the original equation, it is a cubic. So let's wrap up that statement. So we've got enough information. The coordinate, 0, comma, negative 4. And that is or was a point of, oh, I've spelled that wrong, inflection. A point of inflection. So hopefully we're getting the hang of this. We're using the second derivative and we're classifying it as a minimum, maximum, or point of inflection. Let's clear the screen. I'm going to pause the video. If you haven't got these examples down, make sure you do. I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to finish up with the blue question. Okay, we've cleared the screen. We're now going to finish on that. So first step, um, our equation is not really in a form that we could differentiate that easily. So let's simplify our equation. So we're going to get rid of the square to make it a double bracket. And then we're going to go minus 2. We're then going to expand the double bracket. So 1 quarter times x squared minus 4x plus 4. And then we'll take away the 2 at the end. If we expand that again, so that 1 quarter of x squared minus x plus 1. Oh, apologies. Plus, oh no, plus 1 minus 2. That's then going to get us the next version. Let's simplify the parts at the end. That's going to become 1 quarter of x squared minus x. Um, and then we're going to go minus 1 after that. We're now going to differentiate. We're going to make y dash equal to 0. So y dash, that's going to be equal to 1 quarter times 2, which is 2 quarters, so 1 half of x. And x becomes minus 1. We know at that point y dash is equal to 0. So 0 is going to be x divided by 2 minus 1. So I've changed 1 half of x to x divided by 2. We're going to move the minus 1 to the other side, which makes plus 1 equals x divided by 2. 2 times 1 is 2, so our x value will be equal to 2. At this point here, let's find the corresponding y value. So we need to substitute 2 back into our equation. So y is equal to 1 quarter of 2 minus 2, we're going to square that, and then we're going to take away 2. Um, 2 minus 2 is 0, 0 squared is 0, 0 times 1 quarter is 0, and that means our y value is negative 2. Our final step, let's get into the second derivative. So we need to differentiate our first equation, or y dash. So if we differentiate, that's going to be 1 half. The x goes away, minus 1 is a constant, so that goes away as well. And this number here is a positive number, and if we match that up with our table, we know that maximums will have a positive second derivative. So that there mathematically confirms the turning point of equation 3 is a maximum. So therefore, 2 comma negative 2 will be a maximum. So hopefully you found this video useful. We use the second derivative method to determine the nature of stationary points. If you're looking for an alternate method, please look at the previous video in the series, and that will help you out by using the table to find the features. Thanks for listening, guys. Now let's get into heaps of practice.